Hi all, Martin of Flicking Feathers again today and I'm tying Shanks Sculpin and a wee variation of it. It's a very good little fly, it's a nice introduction to streamers, um, both tying and fishing them, uh, if you're a bit intimidated maybe by some of the bigger stuff, which some people can be. Very effective as well, works for trout, bass, anything, any game fish uh, will eat these in the rivers. So I've got my hook and my vise, this is a size 6, TMCO 5263, just use whatever sort of, uh, long shank streamer hook you like. And I'm going to run on some O2O lead wire, that's a medium lead wire, and I'm going to wait, I'm going to cover like half the shank. So, starting at the back, so that I'm maybe in line with the point of the hook, I'm going to come forward and leave about a third of the hook bare, and then I'll bring it back and batter this on for another halfway back down. Plenty of lead. You need to counteract any boy and seeing the deer hair, head really, um, and you want the fly to get down. Start the thread right at the hook eye. You don't need to worry about leaving it clear or whatever that like some folk claim about spinning the hair. As long as your hair's clean, it will spin. I'm just coating that with thread. This is just a, a fly master plus 140 denier. Something like that. Don't see my super glue, so I'll just use some head cement. Just something that can soak in between the the, the lead wire, and it can also uh, set up as one single piece. And I'm just going to cover it, make sure everything's well locked in, and it's a fairly smooth base. Tail is just marabou. I'm using a grizzly marabou, um, but you can use anything, anything you like. Just olives, browns, blacks, whatever you like. Now, I'm doubling up on these because it's just quite small feathers. It's really a chickaboo, uh, and I want it say about a hook length off the back. Let's catch that in. Put back. Make sure you've got a nice tail there. Just tie that on. That will sort of help you smooth the taper a wee bit into the lead. And then I'm going to make a dub and loop. thread up to the front. Just half hitch that. So it's out of the way. I'll get just make sure that's nice and open. Now I've got the dubbing loop slightly ahead of the tail. There's four mil gap there. That's just so that I to avoid catching the marabou um, and I can just wind back a wee bit of bare thread. Now the original pattern for this is just sculpting wool um, and any kind of shaggy wool like Durban will do. I'm using a mix of, it's actually Angora goat I'm using, um, but it gives a nice effect and it's just, I forget like brown and olive and a wee bit of black just in there. It's not really that thoroughly blended, it's just to give a sort of mottled, uneven colour, and I'm just sticking that in the loop. I haven't aligned the fibres that much, I don't want it all look really long. That's probably enough there. And I don't, as I say, I'm not looking like, to have an even colour. It'll end up being sort of mottled. 
Oke, kita tampilkan sebenaran. Sebenar. It's not bad. And I'm just going to use the rotary function. Not something that I do very often, but for this it works quite well. I'm just going to wind that to the back. Make sure you don't crush your tail. Get it started. Get a wee pull so it's nice and tight. And then just come forward, building that nice shaggy. Olive body. Now it's sort of fighting me there at the front step off the wire, so I can just come back manually rather than the rotary there and just fix that. I'll tie it off. Two wraps will hold it. Cut it. Then I'll pull this back and tie over the top of it. If you want to, you can brush that body, but um, I mean, it's probably shaggy enough and it will get shaggy as you catch a couple of fish, you know. Um, up to you. I'll, I'll brush it so you see. You can just pull some of the hair out. And, I mean, it's up to you. you. You could brush it and then even trim it if you want it to get a sort of a more obvious taper, but. I really don't think you need to. Collar, I'm using Olive Row. Um, I'm not going to stack it. I don't mind it being a bit sort of uneven and rough. And this is a really clean piece of hair anyway, so the tips are quite well aligned when you cut them. Length, look at that, like halfway into the halfway back along that body. And it's all be about. If you think counting the head, it'll probably be three quarters of the way. About half of this length. I'm going to cut that. But. I'm going to spin my bobbin to cord up my thread and. I'll just pinch this in. Much like you would an elk here or something, and just tie in a few wraps. Make sure it's nice and secure, and you can actually at this stage like force it a wee bit to spread if you need to. I prefer most of the fibres to be on the sides rather than on top. Something like that. That's not bad. And then I'll just uh, tie over it. Make sure it's well locked in and then I'll clean this up right this is what I was saying earlier you don't need a bay or shank as long as it's a clean base right here will spin around a clean base of thread no problem <laughs> any broken hairs of that just take them away and then I'll grab this piece of hair here maybe this is quite good Slightly different olive colour. Again, I, I mean, I've got loads of pieces of olive hair lying about my desk here. Um, just mix it up. If you've only got one piece of hair, then fine. Um, but if you've got a couple of pieces, it's it's quite nice to sort of mottle the the head. a good bunch. I might get this in one bunch or I might need another but I don't really mind either way. Two wraps, loose wraps, no tension and just use your third wrap just to tighten round and you see the hair just follows the head, it's it's easy. And that seems to be enough so I'm just going to work my thread to the front drawing that hair back and then sort of tie, you're tying through it as you go as well, tying it down. Then you 
can just draw everything back and whip finish. Now just one whip finish is enough, I'm just going to leave the tag long. And Scissors or razor blade, uh, I don't think this fly is that crucial. Um, I'll come in with the razor blade though. To get my, my main cuts. I've already used this blade a few times, I'm maybe needing a new one. That first cut parallel to the underside. You know, fairly flat bottom. On top. If you want to curve it, you can. the collar and then once I've got my sort of rough cut I'll t I like to take it out of the vise and I'll use my curved scissors to sort of cut my shape I'll look at it from the top and bottom Try to keep this so you guys can see it. I'll just tidy it up. Keep it flat and wide is sort of what you're aiming for, I think. I like that shape on these flies. Other people like a higher a higher head, but I like something. And we'll look at this. And you can cut these forever, I mean, Knowing when to stop is a good thing. Uh, that will do, I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy with that. So, <laughs> there you go. That's shank sculpting. You can see I've got a bit of a fuller collar here on this one. The one that was in the vise at the start was an old one that's a bit battered, but. Um, You get the idea, right? Just a, a fishy wee fly. As I say, it's great for it's great for trout. It's great for bass. I'm sure other fish will eat it. Uh, I mean, there's loads of wee bullhead type things swimming about in different rivers around the world, and big fish eat them. So there you go. That's shank sculping. Really easy wee time. So I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please uh, give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Hit lines, guys. Bye.